So, while I was getting ready to warm up for the Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 review for my review channel, I realized I never did show off Team Attack Amigo for this channel, haven't I? Well, no better time to do that than now because I figured this would be a great warm up to get uh, used to Sonic 06's control scheme again, so. You know, I spent so much time recording Adventure 1, Adventure 2, Hero, Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, you forget how ultra precise Sonic 06 is, so uh, I figured I used Team Attack Amigo to get myself warmed up, and I figured I'd record it to get it out of the way because I technically didn't show this off for the channel yet. So, with that said, greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 Let's Play. So. I technically completed this game a few months ago. I can't I can't believe it's already been months since I've uh, recorded the final battle with Solaris. You know, unless you want to count the multiplayer videos I did with Elliot, then uh, it's only been about three months. But I technically didn't show off the DLC yet, and well, Sonic 06 has. A few things that you can download off the Xbox Live Market or the PlayStation Network Store, and why I would personally recommend that you would not waste your money on such things. I'm, the only reason why I'm doing this is to entertain you guys. <laughs> you know, the DLC is uh, a few things. One, we have this uh, mode I'm playing right now, which is Team Attack Amigo. The other is like a, a boss rush, which is pretty self-explanatory. And the last thing I believe is the very hard mode missions, where you know it's pretty much a different difficulty select for Sonic, Shadow, and Silver stages. I have all the DLC, ladies and gentlemen. Whether or not I want to show off all the DLC is up to you, but I, I have a few exceptions, mind you. Uh, I don't feel like, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to record a video with the boss rush because that's that's exactly what it sounds like. It's a boss rush. We're just fighting boss, you know, one, boss two, boss three, boss three, uh, boss four, all in sequential order. You know, it's pretty, you, you can, I can do that technically by just recording the game, editing up all the boss fights together. It's really nothing spectacular. Very hard mode. If you want me to do like a, a showcase video, then I can do that. If you would rather have me do a level by level showcase, then I can do that. But if you want me to do the latter option, I'm only doing that with Sonic, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care about Shadow or Silver's very hard missions. And the only reason I'll put up with Sonic is because Sonic is my favorite character in the game, next to Blaze, anyway. You know, so I can technically cheese my way past all the stages with the gems, and, you know, if it'll make it easier on myself, then I'll do so. But I'll leave that up to you guys, you know, you leave a comment if you'd rather have me a showcase video or a level by level demonstration, you know, I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, anyway, onto the mode itself, Team Attack Amigo has you control three characters as you play through a gauntlet of stages, uh, with no hub world in between, you're just going from stage to stage. And you would think with a name like Team Attack Amigo, you're pretty much focusing all of Sonic's buddies, you know. Tails, Knuckles, Rouge, Omega, Blaze, and uh, did Silver have a th third kit? Uh, yeah, Amy, yeah, Amy. Oh. But uh, no, for Team Attack Amigo, you only control three characters. You only con you control Tails in the first few stages, then Control switches to Blaze, and then Control finally switches to Omega. Why these three characters? I'm not sure, but I'm actually kind of glad because out of all the Amigos in this game. Tails, Blaze, and Omega are technically the best ones. I'd rather not go through an entire stage with Knuckles, considering how he controls in this game. I'd rather not go through an entire stage with Rouge, considering how she controls very similarly to Knuckles, and it's pretty much the same damn thing. And I sure as hell would not like going through an entire stage with Amy. So if they had to pick three characters, and only three, I'm at least glad it's these three, because Tails... While nowhere near as versatile or as fast or as fun as he was in Adventure 1, is still pretty competent in some ways. I mentioned earlier in the Let's Play that I love controlling Blaze, you know, I think she has a really effective fire spin attack and I love the double jump. And Omega, well, you know, besides having the ability to fly over everything with his broken hovering ability, you know, he has pretty, he has long range attacks and while they're nothing like Sonic Heroes, they're still rather effective 
but we'll get more on that later. Now, I'm not sure whether it's just me or not, but for some reason with, with Tails, I'm not sure if my mind's playing tricks on me, but I swear Tails' ground speed has been increased for this mode. But I'm not sure. Like I, uh, I, I when I when I first played Team Attack Amigo, something felt off with me for Tails. His flight controls are pretty much the same. I don't, I don't feel any changes there. But his ground speed looks like it was increased. So that just makes me wonder if they did increase his ground speed for this mode. That means they had the ability to change physics and shit through DLC. I, I don't recall if Team, uh, if Team Attack Amiga was located was on this DLC or not. I can't remember if it was separate DLC. I don't remember that. But the fact is, if his speed was changed through DLC, then why the fuck wasn't anything else improved with DLC with that regard? Physics, collision detection, any of that shit. But that's a whole other issue that I think I'm going to bring up during the review because... The Team Attack Amigo, while I, I am a fan of its structure, I really do like how you go from stage to stage with no hub world. In fact, I think Sonic 06 would have benefited if it was structured entirely like that. But, again, it, it just brings up more questions. And, you know, in, in some ways it's good, and in some ways it's it's just it's mind-blowing. Heck, you can do this, but you didn't feel like doing this with every, anything else. And this is, I don't know, if you, guys, if you guys want to consider this the closest thing we had to free mode, if, if you guys ever recall, there was supposed to be a free mode inside Sonic 06. I think it was supposed to be a reward for getting all the gold medals, where you can pretty much play as any stage with any character. Though personally, with some of these with how these characters control, I don't think that'd be a good thing. But, you know, the ability to play as Blaze in multiple stages, besides the ones she gets in Silver Stage, which is not many to begin with, and these stages in Team Attack Amigo, and I, I would have liked that. You know, I would like to see how Sonic handles the billard puzzle. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Nobody should ever have to experience that. But, uh, you know, Team Attack Amigo, we get to play as Blaze again. Uh, you know, I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, we're actually playing through Sonic's uh, portion of Tropical Jungle, and we couldn't really do much with Sonic in his uh, take because he was carrying Elise the entire time, but Blaze... No, there's no Princess Elise in sight, so we're, you know, we can get to use everything. We can use the double jump, we can attack enemies efficiently without having to rely on that shield technique, and, you know, uh, more power to her. With that said, though, uh, Tropical Jungle, again, because of the ultra-precise controls and shit like that, has a lot of odd moments where you really have to watch yourself here. Like, this section right here, you're required to double jump towards the spring, and I, I don't know, maybe you can use the homing attack to technically cheese your way up there, but, you know, considering your footing, you have those logs that are floated, you know, floating in the water, then I wouldn't really recommend that because, you know, the water, if you go more than six inches into it, you're going to die. And, you know, it's stupid, but that's just how the game works. And then you have this section right here, which I've also had my share of issues here. Well, for, you know, it, it's automated. It's about as automated as you can get. You know, there's that one, that right there is probably the most control you'll have over Blaze, but you're doing this grinding sequence, uh, not this one in particular, but the moment you start uh, grinding on the treetops, uh, there's this one spring, the one that's coming up right here, though, that ha I've had plenty of times where that spring glitched out on me and I fell to my death. Um, would I consider myself lucky it didn't happen this time? I don't know. I've played, I played Team Attack Amigo about maybe, if I can count off the top of my head, probably five to six times total. And I've had that spring glitch out on me about two to three times off the top of my head. I don't remember exactly. But, you know, for the most part, the what Blaze goes through in this mode, it really isn't that bad, except this part right here. This is the worst part of Blaze's playthrough, is this section right here. Because the camera angle is terrible for that part. You have to maneuver the camera so not, so not only that you can see the platform that you're supposed to land on, but you also have to maneuver Blaze to actually land on the thing because she overshoots the platform with this ramp right here. And you're, you gotta remember that your uh, mid-air controls are just as ultra precise as they are on the ground and that's really fucking finicky. And it's very easy to die there. Very easy to die there. But once you get past that part then Aquatic Base pretty much becomes the same thing we've been playing with uh, Sonic, Shadow, and Silver for that, for that matter. 
You know, and Blaze doesn't have a slide kick like Sonic, and she can't gimp her way past these lasers. She just has to maneuver them with her homing attack, which I gotta say looks very odd when you're not actually homing in on anybody. It just looks like she's torpedoing herself in the air. But, you know, she's still a pretty good character, and I'll give her that. And, you know, you remember this section from earlier? You just hit these magnetic poles, it kills all the enemies on the screen. Awesome stuff, and you can just pretty much ignore everything from that point. I don't know what hit me there. I think it was, might have been a laser that caught me off guard. And Blaze doesn't actually have a metallic sphere section, so she has to rely on her double jump to get past all these platforming sections, which is uh, actually easier than it sounds. Because uh, I think you, I think their double jump, again, works well enough, and you have just the right amount of control to get past these platforms. I played this game way too many fucking times. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, a lot of you guys, when I'm, after you guys watched the Shadow of the Hedgehog review, you guys recommended that, you, you know, you should just take, you know, your Let's Play footage and use that for the review. And guys, as tempting as that is, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm going to actually go out of my way to record a completely fresh playthrough for the review because... that, that That's just the way I work, guys. That, that really is. It's, that's the way I work. I don't like to take something that I've already established and use it for multiple things. No, I like to take. I like to start fresh, start from scratch when I'm working on either a Let's Play or a review channel. That's just how I work. Which means, yes, I might get Elliot back down here to record new multiplayer footage <laughs> when I bring up multiplayer in the review. And well, uh, we'll probably we'll bring an umbrella for that occasion. <laughs> But uh, besides uh, going through the uh, going through the roundabouts here with Team Attack Amigo, I figured I'd give you guys a little update on what exactly is going on with the uh, Let's Play channel because you guys have been questioning what's going on with the upload schedule as of late. And Mario Brothers U was a little sporadic here and there. Like uh, I think I've gone two Fridays without uploading anything. And uh, Final Fantasy IV seems to be all over the place. Well, Final Fantasy IV I can't excuse because. Uh, since that's our, uh, a post-commentary LP, I have to take my time to record footage for that game sometime off the schedule, and then I gotta make sure everything is ready to go when Matt comes over and we uh, get ready to record footage. If the footage is not ready to go by the time Matt's here, then you know we, uh, we, we have to unfortunately postpone that because we uh, record that post-commentary in the same room. We don't do that over Skype or anything like that. No, we're in the same room with each other when we record uh, commentary for that. And uh, secondly, uh, the Mario U playthrough, I've been intentionally keeping sporadic because we're, uh, I was almost on the verge of running out of footage because we only recorded up to four worlds on our first session. And then uh, my brother Mark had to leave for military duty again. And uh, he wasn't gonna be back for like another week or two weeks after that. So I had to make sure the parts lasted long enough before he got back because he's technically visiting on vacation leave uh, this week so I want to make sure he's back so we can record the rest of Mario U with him. I don't want to ditch him like we did in the Mario Wii playthrough because four players is better than three. And that's pretty much how... Oops, sorry about that. I hit the pop filter on my mic. <laughs> but that's generally how uh, I'm working on things there. We have, like, we have plenty of LA Noir footage ready to go. And we actually have plenty of Mega Man Legends footage ready to go too. But I don't want to get started on Legends until at least Mario U is finished. Because I know Mario, you will be finished before L.A. Noir. L.A. Noir still has a bit to go. If you don't, if I don't, you know, if I can put it in <laughs> sweet words. But yeah, that's generally how things are going right now. And I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we have so much planned for next year. We really do. You know, besides the next batch of Sonic games, you know, the next batch of Mario games. We're also starting some new uh, games, new, new series that we've been meaning to touch for such a long time. Like, you know, Metal Gear Solid. We have... Um, you know, LA wants to get started on the God of War series, all that stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of stuff planned, and I really hope you guys look forward to that. And again, the only reason why I'm going back to this game for this special part is because I, I'm warming up for the Sonic 06 review, and I figured I'd warm up with Team Attack Amigo and get something ready for the Let's Play channel because I technically didn't show this off yet. But anyway, uh, Aquatic Base was the last of Blaze's sections, unfortunately, and now the rest of the mode belongs to Omega. And I don't remember if I uh, technically showed this off during the Let's Play, but uh, if you constantly mash the A button with Omega, 
you know, he pretty much gets infinite flight with his hovering ability. If you just hold down the jump button, Omega's hover will give him about... Uh, well, I'm not going to actually measure the distance, but it gives him a bit of distance, but not enough. But if you constantly just mash the A button, Omega will never lose altitude. As you can see here, I am completely fucking this level in the ass because I'm flying over everything. I caught a little snag there with the invisible wall, but I know exactly where to go from this point on. And yeah. Now, if you decide to play this level normally with Omega, it's pretty much... Uh, you have to kill... It's pretty much a gauntlet. You have to kill a specific amount of enemies, or pretty much every enemy that's in your path, to get these pillars to rise from the sand so you can stand on them as platforms and slowly inch your way towards the gold ring. It's boring. So I figured, let's throw off a glitch while we're here, and let's fly our way towards the gold ring. In the meantime, we can get a complete look at Dusty Desert from above. You can see pretty much everybody's section of Dusty Desert, with the exception of Silver's, because he's completely underground. Uh, to the right, we can see Sonic's uh, beginning point. I'm not going to show it off because I think I already flew past it. And to the left that we just passed, that's where Shadow has to enter in order to do his part. And we're pretty much flying over the whole area where Shadow had to ride the fucking hovercraft in order to get that place to open up in the first place. But other than that, yeah. We're flying over this entire thing because I really don't feel like running the gauntlet for this stage. Let's just fly over it. There's the gold ring right there. There it is. Let's fall down, touch the gold ring, and get to the other part of Omega Stage, which is White Acropolis. This is the final stage of Team Attack Amigo, by the way. And unfortunately, unlike Desert, unlike Dusty Desert, you can't fly over this entire stage. No, we have to pretty much run the course. And you notice that my lives jumped from 14 to 12. Well, for two reasons, actually. Uh, one, I was trying to see if you could fly over White Acropolis. <laughs> and, uh... Now, I actually I ended up wasting too much time doing that, so I hit the start button, I hit start over. And uh, the second time is, uh, I, I was barely three, I was barely ten seconds into the stage and I got hit by one of the like, robot's Vulcan cannon shots with no rings. And I ended up wasting time there, so I figured, that's only ten seconds you're missing, so it's not a big deal. So, let's just edit it up to the point where everything goes smoothly, quote unquote. But yeah, White Acropolis is the longest part of Team Attack Amigo because you have to kill everything. But this is how it works. It's actually pretty similar to Dusty Desert. You saw in the beginning of the stage there, there's a door behind Omega that he can't access yet because the switch that opens the door is blocked by this glowing box. That glowing box only opens when you kill every enemy in the stage? I don't know. I think it's either every enemy that's in your path or a specific amount of enemies because... Um, as we'll see later, uh, what well, then again, I don't know, because I, I'm not exactly sure. I think, just to be safe, you should kill every enemy that's in your way. That also includes going into these ice walls that you see right there, because there are uh, those uh, Eggman mech crawler thingies that like to hide in those. So I'd recommend going in there too, to take those enemies out. And I also would recommend that you... Uh, Get yourself spotted by the searchlights, because when that happens, the searchlight will, you know, blare the siren and it'll start, it'll summon more enemies to kill. And I think these are required to get the cage to open. I'm not sure, but better safe than sorry. That's pretty much all I can say. Oh, I miss Omega's attacks in Sonic Heroes. <laughs> I mean, when the, when the blaster works, it works well enough. But it sounds like a damn pea shooter. Yeah, maybe that's not a reason enough to hate it, but... And at the end, then you got situations like this where you just tap in the X button and... What exactly is Omega doing? Is he just, like, doing a, you know, burst shot that has pathetically short range, but it doesn't even do as much damage as a charge shot. But then again, that there are times where the charge shot, where you swear you're holding down the X button, you let go of the X button, which is the way to fire the weapon, and then nothing happens. You're either that or the shots don't go anywhere. Like I'm having a hard I was having a hard time hitting that guy up there for some reason when I've clearly shot other enemies that were of a higher altitude than that enemy. Now but look at this. Like that, that that takes forever. That's that's so boring. It's monotonous. It's the same it's the equivalent of constantly homing attacking a huge enemy with Sonic's homing attack. Or using Shadow's combat skills, his breakdancing in midair, if you could call it that. You know, but then you got occasions like that where the scatter shot works pretty well. 
But that doesn't happen all the time. And I don't, don't, I don't know what triggers it. I don't know what triggers it to be bad, and I don't know what triggers it to be effective. And as many times as I played this game, I still don't know that. It's, I, I swear it's random. Hidden five rings inside the rock there. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. Every time you see something out of the ordinary, or if you think, if your instincts are telling you that something might be there, uh, most of the time your instincts will be right because there are a lot of times where, uh, in Sonic, in 3D games, Sonic games in general, where if I see something that just looks odd or, you know, one of these things is not like the other, then I will most likely go over there and investigate it. And most of the time, you know, my instincts are right. I end up getting ring boxes or an invincibility power up, and, you know, that's nice. But yeah, we're actually, uh, White Acropolis for Omega is broken up into two halves. The first half here that we're still running in, by the way, is pretty much a gauntlet. You have to kill all the enemies in order to access the second half. Once we get to the, once we get to the second half, uh, then it becomes pretty straightforward, actually. It's no longer about killing all the enemies, it's just a matter of getting past everything to get to the goal ring. And I can technically ignore this guy that I'm firing at right now because the switch to get the other switch open is there and I can technically hit it now. Now, if you guys are wondering why exactly I couldn't fly over everything at the beginning of the stage, it's because that switch right there, the one that we're about to go to right now, uh, doesn't appear until you kill a certain amount of enemies. So you need a switch to open up another switch to open the door. And that's how it works. You know, I, I initially did try flying over here, and I did. I managed to actually glitch my way up here with uh, Shadow's, uh, uh, Shadow's, Omega's hovering ability. And, but the switch wasn't there. So, okay, so that pretty much just tells me that I have to kill every enemy to get that switch to appear in order to get this switch to open, in order to get that door to open. But yeah, that's that's generally how it works. And now we're in the second half of White Acropolis, and now, now we're just getting to the goal ring at this point. We can ignore everything technically, but if you want to go ahead and kill all these enemies for the sake of trying to get an S rank with enemy score alone, then by all means, because uh, the score is shared between all three characters in Team Attack Amigo. Uh, I think the requirement for getting uh, S rank is still the same, 50,000 points, but it doesn't really matter. You're not rewarded. I don't think you're, no, you're not awarded a medal at all for completing this. It's DLC, so I think that's probably the reason why. But even then, you know, gold medals are worthless. There's absolutely no point unless you want bragging rights. That's pretty much the only thing this game's worth is bragging rights when it comes to 100%ing it. You know, or you're doing a let's play of it like I am. Pause break. <laughs> ah, the power of editing. That pause break was actually 10 minutes long, but you, but to you, it was only mere seconds. Ah, oh, Lord. Can't believe I'm still doing this game. <laughs> oh, I want to get that one-up box, but I can't get to it because of, uh, you know, Omega can retain his altitude, but he can't gain altitude when he matches the button. I don't think you can anyway. And I can technically, you could technically run through all this like Sonic did, minus the dash pads, but you know, Omega has that hovering ability, you can fly over everything. Now you see this closed door over here, you think you might have to kill all the enemies to get that thing to open, but no, you only have to kill these enemies that spawn right in front of it, and that's it, the door will open for you. You see, look, that, you, know, you see, that's the spread shot working pretty well right there. But, you know, there are times where it just, it's inconsistent. Good lord, that thing jumped in the air. <laughs> did you see it? <laughs> that, my, that little pea shooter did that? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, you know, I want, I, yeah. I don't understand why they made Omega the way he was for this. I really don't. Why make any character the way they did, really? I mean, why did they get rid of Rouge's martial arts? Why did they butcher Knuckles' speed so much? Why did they butcher Tail's speed so much? Why did they get rid of the chaos powers for Shadow the Hedgehog that he had in Shadow the Hedgehog, you know, in, that he had in this game Shadow, oh, I'm sorry, Random Egg Genesis. Yeah, the, the, the boss of Team Attack Amigo is Egg Genesis, and we're fighting him as Omega this time, so, uh, same rules apply, only, you know, we're not using Psychokinesis, or we're not using a gravity-defying homing attack, no. Omega has to rely on his blaster in order to hit the core. But, with that said, I think Omega has the easiest time fighting Egg Genesis, because... Well, he has a long-range weapon, he can do some serious damage really quickly to the Egg Genesis. 
Only problem is I would recommend you keep your distance from the Egg Genesis because the camera always focuses on Egg Genesis. And when he's high in the sky such as this, you can barely keep track of Omega. Look, he's barely on the screen as it is. And Egg Genesis likes to summon these little crawler mechs on the floor. And if you don't have any rings, it's very easy to run into those things and that'll cost you a life. Uh, I would generally just ignore them though. I mean, once the Egg Genesis is low enough, just focus on the core. And then if you want to be a little bit risky, then you can keep shooting at him. Just make sure you have at least one ring so you can take this cannon blast, which Omega can barely avoid because he's just fast enough in order to outrun the damn thing. But if you're too close to it, you can't outrun it no matter how fast you are. But yeah, you see, like, like it is here, Omega is not even on the camera. He's not even in the screen anymore. I, I can't tell where Omega's at anymore. But that's just me because I just want to get this boss fight out of the way first. I just want to get the boss fight out of the way as fast as possible. Now, I'm being reckless, but I have one ring. I don't really care. I've already fought this guy like two times before with two different characters. I, I just lost interest at this point. <laughs> But that's pretty much all I can say. One final hit and he should be dead. Die, please. Okay, thank you. And just like last time, uh, as soon as a Genesis health is depleted, he will attempt a desperation attack. That, uh, fun fact, I, while I would recommend you grab a ring for it, you know, to take the blow, if for some reason you get hit by that with no rings, uh, you will technically die, but the result screen will pop up before you complete your death animation and it won't count. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, unless you jump into the Egg Genesis during its desperation attack, you can just stand there and let the Egg Genesis fall on you, and you won't suffer any sort of consequence whatsoever. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the end of Team Attack Amigo. That's all it is. If you, I'm wondering, this says my progress was 0%, but I just finished the damn thing. Alright. Well, well, what else I can say, though, ladies and gentlemen? The last left for me is to get started on the review at some call me Johnny and well uh, the choice is still out there for the very hard mode do you want me to showcase it with Sonic or do you want me to do a level by level run through whatever you guys want I will do because well I love you guys but with all that said you guys have a great night and take care